Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkies, and welcome to episode number 149 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the podcast. As you know by now, the Knife Junkie podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn everything about knives and knife collecting. Whether you're a, a novice, an intermediate, a veteran knife collector, uh, the Knife Junkie podcast is where we try to uh, dive deep and learn everything we can about knives. Our Sunday weekend show is the interview show. This midweek ep- uh, episode is where Bob gets a chance to dive deep into the Knife Life news stories, as well as cover uh, his state of the collection, which I think this week is going to be the majority of the show, Bob. A lot of activity in the Knife Junkie collection. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit. And and luckily, a lot of it is not mine. Some of it is on loan. And I say luckily because I'd be going broke uh, otherwise. <laughs> Maybe having some uh, more conversations with Mrs. Knife Junkie about things going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk about uh, knives going out and not your knives going out, but a, yep. uh, a Knife Junkie Patreon knife. Because uh, as our listeners know, every Thursday on uh, Thursday Night Knives, well, not every Thursday, the third Thursday on Thursday Night Knives is when the Knife Junkie does his Patreon knife giveaway. And that was yep. last week. Yep, yep. We gave away uh, a SOG, the new SOG Pentagon XR from the new reboot of the Studies and Observation Group or SOG or whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's a fantastic new knife, kind of in the, well, in the tradition of of the Pentagon uh, folder. That was one of the folders they never cheesed out when they when they went down that road. So uh, they, they, uh, they kept true to form, redesigned it, rebooted it with nice materials, uh, CTX, I, I always have a hard time saying this, <laughs> XHP steel, CTS XHP steel. It just rolls right off the top. <laughs> yeah, right. Cryo treated and uh, beautiful uh, G10 handles, uh, linerless, by the way. <clears throat> so it's nice and light. And it's got their version of the access lock, their version of the bar lock, the ambidextrous bar lock or the axis lock as it is now unpatented. They do a great job with it. And uh, Barefoot 130, a uh, um, uh, gentleman who's been, presumably a gentleman who's been a uh, patron with us for uh, since we started uh, the Patreon group and uh, happy to see him win. Uh, one, one thing I really like about the giveaway is the wheel that you create uh jim that you put up the random wheel it's like spin the random wheel of fortune see if you win a knife that's always kind of fun to watch so yeah i I didn't create it i just found it online (laughs) but yeah as far as we all know you created it awesome job right Right. (laughs) have to uh i do have to input the names oh my gosh it takes so long to do that i I work so hard for this show (laughs) but yeah it is a cool it is a cool feature it's uh much more uh Visual, since we're now doing the podcast on both uh, audio and video, it is a nice, uh, a nice thing to see. You know, actually, kind of get some tension going, and oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, I almost won! Oh, darn it! You know, maybe next <laughs> month. Also, uh, barefoot and everyone else who's won uh, this. This is the third knife to go out. Uh, I would love to see pictures of of your new knives in their new natural habitat. So, uh, take pictures, send them in. Uh, we'll we'll post them here. And uh, yeah, I just want to see how how it's integrating into your carry, if you will. Right. But we can uh, put them up on uh, some of the show notes page at thenifejunkie.com or uh, the Knife Junkie can also uh, put them up on his uh, Instagram at thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram. A lot of uh, places we can uh, use some of those pictures. So we would definitely like to uh, to do that. And if you would like, uh, send us a picture, uh, either Bob at thenifejunkie.com or post it on Instagram, tag Bob or whatever, and uh, then call the listener line at 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487, and let us know your thoughts about that knife. And then what we can do is create what they call one of these little neat little audiograms, maybe have a picture of the knife, mm, your yeah, voice yeah, yeah. describing it, talking about it, or if you'd like to just shoot a video clip, same thing, uh, do it yourself. Uh, but we would love to uh, to get some feedback. And of course, you, I've got the... Um, the link on screen if you want to join the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. 
thenifechunky.com slash Patreon. And if you join at the uh, $10 a month level, that gets you into the monthly knife drawing giveaway, which, uh, as we said, is the third Thursday of every month. And that'll be coming up on Thursday, October 15th edition of Thursday Night Knives, which you can catch on the Knife Junkies YouTube and the Knife Junkies Facebook page. So uh, Thursday Night Knives are always fun, Bob. And this uh, oh, yeah. this past Thursday night was uh, Tanto Blades. And uh, that was kind of a, a popular one. A lot of folks have been uh, watching it live and a lot of folks catching it in the replay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think Tantos themselves have had a bit of a... Um uh, are enjoying a, uh, another spot in the sun. You know, they come and go. Some, a, lot of, a lot of times people think that um, tantos are just for tactical use because of their, you know, their, their attributes. But uh, I think a lot of people have discovered how useful they are. And um, I think maybe, just maybe, it had to do with the influx of the worn cliffs out there. People started to realize, oh, this, the straight edge that you find on most tantos is very useful. Plus, you get that secondary edge and tip. And uh, yeah, it was just fun to talk about, uh, to gather around the tanto. And, uh, you know, we've had we've had a lot of people recently say, well, I used to not like them, but now I'm really coming around. So I mm -hmm. thought it was a good topic of conversation. Plus, uh, it's a good opportunity for me to pull out my tantos and show them off. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. Well, you mentioned the uh, the, the Warncliffe. Uh, you just had a recent video on the YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube about the Warren Cliff collection, if you will. So uh, yeah, folks yeah. hadn't seen that. Yeah, go check it out. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of the, the whole concept of the sub collection. You have your collection of knives, but, you know, some people have collections of Spyderco Paramilitary 2s or case knives or things that are very collectible. Uh, and I was looking through what my tastes are these days, and I keep going back to the Warren Cliff, so I figured I would you know, as a, as a sort of survey or study, bring them all together and, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, shoot one video on it. So yeah, it's funny. Right. Yeah. I guess, uh, my collection of, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 knives, I guess my sub collection is buck. I have four buck yeah, knives. So, right. <laughs> you know, that's, I don't know that just, just happened, but anyway, all right, a lot of show to uh, come. We've got uh, several stories and knife life news to get to, but then, of course, a lot of knife talk with uh, knives coming in and going out for mm -hmm. the Knife Junkie. So uh, stay tuned. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right, Bob, going to turn it over to you for uh, Knife Life News. We've got uh, three stories, I think, to uh, cover. Uh, what? The first one involving Boker, I believe. Yeah, the first one's an interesting uh, little California legal uh, auto Boker uh, called the Shamshire, and uh, it is it's interesting because uh, Shamshire, uh, which is a slightly different spelling, is is a the famous large curved kind of scimitar like uh, blade out of the Middle East. This does not look like that at all. This looks like kind of a little faux dagger uh, with a very um, very neutral squared off handle. But the interesting thing about this, uh, it, well, first of all, it's a, uh, a collaboration between uh, custom knife makers, Dariel Castan, who I know for really interesting design and mechanism stuff, and Stan Moises, uh, who, who I am unfamiliar with. Uh, mm -hmm. So they came together on this project. And the real interesting part of it is it's an automatic, but it uses a different kind of uh, mechanism. Actually, so I was reading about this uh, Stan Moises uh, fella, and he makes, um, he's known for making switch blades uh, that have the um, a lever on the bolster instead of a button. And that's uh, the very first uh, automatic I ever got was one my brother brought back from Germany in the 80s, and it was that same kind of lever action. So I I like that sort of uh, different mechanism, uh, different from what we see most of the time uh, today, which is a button or a, a slide. In any case, this reminds me a little bit of the kick stop, uh, the kick stop uh, um, from Lee Williams, uh, in that it has a little lever on top. Uh, you actuate it, and the blade flies open uh, without uh, without the um, opening mechanism aspect of it uh, disappearing. It just sort of stays up there on top. You can use it as a thumb rest in either the positive or negative, uh, the little thumb ramp there. Uh, but really, I think the the USP of this sucker is that uh, opening mechanism. 
Uh, plus, it's got uh, it's got sort of a symmetrical dagger like blade and a, an extremely neutral handle. It's small. It's uh, it's a sub two inch uh, D2 blade, uh, but you can carry it in California. So, hey, there you go. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. G10 and copper skills. Copper is always cool. Uh, it's a unique um, kind of metal to have on folders. The way it uh, the way it um, patinas and and all that. It, it really retains character. It is heavy, however. So uh, you can either get this in the G10 version, which is a, a little bit over two ounces, or the copper version, which is a little over three inches or uh, three ounces. So, um, yeah, you've got a choice to make there. All right. Uh, you know, a little bit of knowledge is dangerous for a knife newbie. Uh, we hear the term handle to blade ratio. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those knives I, I look at and go, that uh, is probably a great example of handle to blade ratio. Uh, because in, uh, in my mind, the handle is way too big for the little bitty blade. Well, I would agree. I think, I think um, just to my eye, the handle to blade ratio is off. I, I always like, but there are some great, great knives out there like the paramilitary two that has a totally wonky handle to blade ratio, if you ask me. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's really your eyes issue because the blade itself is going to work fine. The larger handle is going to make it more comfortable and more wieldy. Um, so it is just kind of a, uh, uh, an aesthetic thing to me, handle to blade ratio. But in this case, I agree with you. It's ghastly. You know, you got this <laughs> tiny little blade and this big handle, but uh, yeah, it is a, <laughs> it's an outrage, Jim, uh, but it is a, uh, it is a cool looking little knife. And I, and I love, you know, if I were to build out the DeMarco Museum of Interesting Mechanisms and Locks, this would definitely uh, be a part of it. So, hmm. All right. Okay. Well, next up in uh, Knife Life News, I will let you read the headline uh, because I don't, I'm terrible with pronunciation. So I'll, I'll just turn it over to you. Okay. The Wee Knife Gava. It's a new knife coming out uh, designed by a, a Polish designer uh, slash maker, um, Rafal, I'm going to say Brezki. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his name. And, uh, uh, but he has a very cool look. And I got to say, I, I I'm not being um, an ethnist right now, but uh, it seems like I always say the Russians have a certain design language you can identify. Well, I have to say that about the Polish too. To me, this looks like a Polish knife. Uh, it is beautiful. It has some very interesting lines and facets to it that uh, are not in any way derivative uh, but um, uh, reminiscent of or on the same shelf in the same category as uh, as um, a uh, a knife designed by, um, uh, what's his name? We had him on the show. Oh, stop hell. I'm sorry. I'm hearing some background noise here. It's distracting me. This reminds me kind of a, of an oh, stop hell design, especially in the handle. Uh, but I think it's that Polish design language. Anyway, this, this will be coming out uh, soon from Knife, uh, We Knife, uh, 3.25 inch blade which is a lot of people's ideal uh, for EDC. It's going to be in 20 CV steel, which is an excellent, excellent um, high edge retention uh, steel. So great for EDC, I think. I think that kind of steel is better for a smaller EDC knife that you're using all the time. Um, so you don't have to sharpen it all the time. Uh, and it's going to come in at 3.7 ounces. So uh, uh pretty cool looking knife and it's got the uh the titanium treatment that i really like i'm not exactly sure what it's called um but also jim when you look at the uh, slight arc of that handle and then the the pommel mm. area i love that pommel area the way there's that uh yeah. that secondary the angle there pommel area is the very the back part the very back part so i look at this knife right down, and, right down here uh yes sir right there Okay. And, right. and right under that share image, you can see how it's got the two angles there. Those two mm -hmm. angles for me uh, are ideal when you have it in reverse grip and you have your thumb capping the back. Sort of fits perfectly right over gotcha. that back there. Gotcha. Um, okay. Anyway, so I think it's a beautiful knife. It's, it's, uh, it's traditional and, and uh, modern and unique at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, li I like the look of that one. Yeah. And... Um, <clears throat> You know, not, not that I've paid much attention to, I know we've talked a lot about Wii knives, but I've never really paid attention to the branding and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Is the, uh, right there in the middle, uh, is that 
we brand is that kind of the the standard look that they have on every every knife yeah. right right there yep okay i happen to have one right here that we're going to talk about in a minute and uh yeah that is on their pivot and i think it's a great and classy way to get your logo on there instead of having it emblazoned all over the clip and the blade and everything a lot of people appreciate how we knife does it and we knife i have a feeling listened to the to the collectors and the knife users out there and stopped with the billboarding. Actually, I don't know if they ever started with the billboarding. I think they've always been very discreet, uh, mm -hmm. but they listened. I know people don't want to see all that writing on the blade. And as a matter right. of fact, um, on most Wii knives and Civivis that I've ever handled, you have to look for even what blade steel it is. It's usually in oh, okay. very small letters right next to the, you know, like in this example, it's a prototype. You, you can see, the steel is right oh there. Gosh. Yeah, wow, it's yeah. very hard to see, and it you know it it disappears in almost all positions. You can't see it, so it's it's cool. It's discreet, yeah. and uh, yeah. I, I I like how we knife makes knives. I, I I like the discreet. If you're a, a good brand, a good maker, you don't need to scream your name. You know, it, if just yeah. just be discreet, and <clears throat> folks will folks will will know. They'll learn, yeah. and uh, they'll appreciate that. What sticks in my craw the most, Jim, is when they put it on the clip. So it's like, hmm. uh, I don't know. To me, that's like, you can't <laughs> right avoid it. Your your, yeah, yeah. ZT does that. I'm like, stop. Yeah. All right. Well, they haven't asked the knife junkie, but if they did, there <laughs> no, you go. No, but I'll keep my eye on my emails. I'm sure they'll right. reach that. Okay. Uh, new, uh, next story, final story in Knife Life News. Uh, Sniper Blade Works, uh, one I was not familiar with. Yeah. So, okay. Sniper Blade Works is a... Uh, an outfit that enjoyed um, quite a bit of um, uh, public exposure several years back uh, with the LPC. Uh, it's a company that's uh, headed up by a gentleman named Lance Abernathy. And um, he put out a couple of designs uh, back in the day. And by back in the day, I mean about 10 years ago, I think. And uh, they were popular and people loved them. And then they kind of quietly went away. And I'm not sure exactly what the story is, but I would like to find out from Mr. Abernathy himself, perhaps. Um, and now he's come back with a line of five new knives and they're all in the Kickstarter. Uh, they're all in a Kickstarter program. And uh, each of the five knives, he is making uh, 555 copies of each one and then that's it so uh, uh presumably well for this run that's it and then hopefully he comes back in the future but uh it's a really interesting um uh sort of range of products here now the one that that we all know um from back early can you go up jim to the the shot of all of them together uh the one that we all know from back in the day is the third one from or is the um the one fourth from the left. Why am I having a hard time this morning? Yeah, that one there. Uh, and then and then the one to its right, I believe, was also out uh, back in the day. So uh, coming back out with five interesting new new knives. And the one that, that's really, really got my attention is the Smatchet in the middle. Uh, you know, the Smatchet is a, um, a knife that was designed in World War II. I think it was by uh, uh, Colonel Fairbairn. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, it's it's like a short sword, hatchet, machete, uh, all around, uh, like pretty badass tool for the jungle. It can be a weapon. It can be uh, a brush clearing uh, tool. It can be anything you want it to be. So anyway, uh, coming back with his signature sort of pistol grip handle style and really excited. You know, I, I always thought that they were cool knives. Uh, but they were kind of around when I wasn't collecting knives of that caliber, if you will, or that expense level or uh, however you want to put it. And then they kind of disappeared from the scene quietly. And uh, and so I never got one. So now this is a chance to get Blade Bladeworks uh, knife into my life. But I also want to find out what the story is uh, with Lance Abernathy. I'm assuming maybe he was a sniper and, uh, you know, and all that. So... Mm. All right. Well, well interesting. Uh, you mentioned uh, several different, what, four or five different uh, blades. And I think you said all in the, the Kickstarter kind of kind of format. So that's yep. that's interesting. And he's calling it his 2020 reload, which I like. It's a it's a mm. it's you know, don't, don't call it a comeback. It's a reload. I like that. 
kind of play off uh, gun terminology. The sniper <laughs> reload. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, favorite knife of uh, any of those uh, that you've talked about in uh, Knife Life News, if uh, somebody had, uh, pinned you down and you had to pick a favorite of the stories you covered there. Of, of all of them? And I had to of walk the, away with one of them? Well, the the four or five and the reload plus the boker as well as the, the other one. It, it would be, um, oh boy, that's a hard one because I, I know it would be one of these sniper blade works knives, oh, okay. but I, I thought, I thought I was going to say right off the bat, it would be the LPC, which stands for a Lance personal carry, by the way. Um, but that's match it. It might have to be the smatch it. Yeah. Well, let's just take a look really quick. That's the LPC. Yeah, and that's that, the LPC. That has got an awkward handle to me. Well, actually that, down. okay. And that's See, they all have that that they all have that pistol grip, that angle of the handle off of the blade, and that's uh, right. very deliberate. And it and it's very um, here two things. It's it's excellent in a sort of thrusting motion because you don't have to oh. torque your wrist forward. You know, you're. It, I, I'm 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 sorry. On the L LPC, it mm -hmm. I was thinking all of that was the handle, but that's the rock it's on. So that's kind of a misleading picture for me. So yeah, it's not it's not an awkward handle. I was <laughs> no, like, no, it's just that black part. <laughs> yeah. But, but the interesting thing about the pistol grip is that it it allows you to thrust without without um, awkwardly re-angling your hand or your wrist. And it also, if you are someone who's way more used to uh, firearms all the time, if you're a, a sniper or something. Right someone like that and and fire firearms are your life um the pistol grip kind of puts the knife in a format that your body's more familiar with i don't know if that's actually true i'm just sort of uh, uh pre presuming that's the case but uh, I, i've always been a fan of the pistol grip style of handle because it's something you see in a lot of indonesian and filipino uh knives and you know that my ilks right. All right. Well, uh, let us know uh, your thoughts, your opinions. Uh, call the listener line, shoot Bob an email, or uh, ju just give us a uh, comment down below. If you're watching on YouTube down in the comment section, you can leave a comment there and uh, let us know any of your thoughts about any of these stories in Knife Life News. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right. Back on the Knife Junkie podcast and uh, a lot of... Uh, knife talk still to come because uh, we're going to dive into uh, Bob's state of the collection. Now we've got knives coming in. We've got knives going out. We've got maybe knives that have already been here. Who knows? Let's, uh, let's dive in and, and talk about, uh, I think probably the, uh, at least here on the podcast, the, the busiest week of uh, state of the collection activity. Yeah, it's been busy. It's been busy because, um, I decided to sell off some knives and, uh, well, by sell off, I sold four knives. I, I put five up um, and uh, four of them sold and I made, uh, so I had a little good uh, little chunk of mad money in, in the old PayPal account. And um, most of that I plan to reabsorb, but I couldn't help but, uh, you know, re reabsorb into the family economy, but I, I couldn't help but but uh, look at a couple of knives uh, before I did that. But I'll get to those in a second. On loan, I have uh, we have some really generous friends. I've mentioned them before, who have loaned me knives, and uh, we have a good friend, Tier One. He's he shows up to every uh, Thursday night knives, and uh, and we we chat a bit on online as much as I, I don't really chat much online, but you know what I mean. Uh, and he sent me two Asher knives. Now, Asher knives is um, an outfit. Um, developed by a knife and EDC guy, um, wanted to make um, great material knives in an affordable range. Um, we're going to talk more about these, uh, the gentleman responsible. Uh, here's a preview. <laughs> uh, two, two of the knives. This is a classic. And look at that. It is indeed a classic. Clip point blade looks like a um a traditional folder you've got this very new handle uh, it's titanium it's uh and got some drop shutty action uh for bronze washers uh but so this is all real high quality material price this thing's like 60 bucks i think um i have to uh i have to check out the website and, and get more on this uh, here is also the uh, Asher Knives Silva, 
And as you can see, it, it is titanium. It is S35VN. It has a very, very nice action. And uh, it's thin. It's in that uh, 3.125 uh, uh, perfect EDC range, and it's unboxed. This guy is doing some interest. His name is Justin. He's doing some really interesting work here. Uh, I'm not sure how they're manufactured, where they're manufactured. Uh, I would imagine uh, it's one of the good uh, Chinese manufacturers, given the quality, but also given the price. You know, um, Asher knives, very cool. Utilitarian design, focused, as you can see there. To me, it looks a bit like yeah, the... Uh, that one, to me, looks a bit like the bug out. Able lock there. Um, yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool with that fuller. I mean, so some pretty interesting, compelling knives at a, right. at a pretty, I mean, look at this, the Silva, it's 60 to 85 bucks. You know, that's a compelling price. 50 bucks for the little classic. That, yeah, now there are the prices. Are, yeah, there are the things like the classic is, is my favorite. There are a couple of things on this design I would change. I would change the pivot in such a way that you could get this clip higher up. The clip is pretty low, and uh, low on a small knife is not good. It, it it can it can come out if you're wearing jeans and you sit down. It can. So uh, I would change the clip, and then the um, the only other th change I would make to this is the uh, the thumb stud. Listen, it's just a little loose. It and it's uh it's pressure fit, so you can't screw it, you know, to make it tighter. So. Those are the two little tweaks I would make to this, and I would call this a perfect gentleman's knife. This thing is awesome. Uh, it's got the traditional nods uh, uh, in the design, but it's it's modern and and it's awesome. So right. very interested in these Asher knives, um, and I look forward to speaking to Justin from Asher. And um, so those are on loan, not mine. And then we have another cool one on loan from from the gentleman we just spoke to Sunday. Matt, Matthew Christensen, Christensen Knife Works. He sent me the Thug. This was the knife we were talking about showing off. This is a prototype by We Knives, who will be produced. It's coming out real soon. I don't know exactly what real soon means, but it's coming out very soon. And uh, it will come in this configuration, which is this cool brushed looking titanium. And uh, what is this? What kind of steel is this? I think it's 20 CV they're going to be putting on this. Uh, I'm not sure, but it will come with this. It will come with fat carbon fiber. And I think there's a third iteration, uh, maybe titanium with a black blue number. Uh, but keep uh, Matthew or, or go back and listen. He talks about the different uh, different uh, ways this will be coming out. But what a gorgeous little knife. And Jim, you know, I like the bigger knives, but I also some small knives just really capture me. And this is one of them. I mean. To me, Matthew designs a beautiful knife, and his tantos are gorgeous. I mean, look at the look at the grinds, the grinds on this. I mean, and you have a very useful blade shape. You have a full belly here. You have the two tips. <clears throat> you have a straight that's recurve. I mean, actually, Matthew even called it a recurve, but it's very slight. So, extremely extremely utilitarian blade, and in just a very handsome package. Pretty cool. So on loan, but uh, maybe when he hears how much I love it, maybe he'll say, oh, Bob, you know, keep it. Just kidding, Matthew. Yep. Now, a lot of uh, what I was going to try to say was a lot of angles on those yeah. blades. Yeah, yeah. A lot of different uh, facets on this uh, sort of Americanized, modified Americanized Tanto. Hollow ground here, flat ground here, beautiful swedge. Uh, and and not for nothing, that handle is not only good looking, but it's very ergonomic. I mean, this is a small, small knife. It it pretty much fits all the way in my medium sized hands, um, but it's also excellent in this grip. You know, if you needed to punch through an oil drum, I'll save the day. You know, you could use it like that. Do you lie in bed? At, yes, at I do. And think, <laughs> yes, you go no further. <laughs> kind of, kind of an inside joke for folks that uh, watched uh, Thursday Night Knives this uh, past week with your uh, Bob versus Bob three a.m. Uh, <laughs> knife <Yeah>. thoughts. 
<laughs> you haven't seen that yet or to catch the reference yet, go catch the replay on the knifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Yep. It's always Bob versus Bob in here. So, yeah. Uh, but we mentioned uh, Matthew Christensen. He, of course, is uh, coming up this weekend on the Sunday interview show. That'll be uh, episode number 150. That'll be coming out uh, this Sunday afternoon. Uh, patrons of the Knife Junkie get early access to that interview actually on Friday. So another uh, reason for you to join the Knife Junkie's Patreon group at thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. All right, Bob, uh, that's it for the incoming, right? Time to mm -hmm. transition over to the outgoing? Well, no, no, that that was it for on loan. Oh, now on the loan. Out the outgoing, yeah. So right. I sold four knives, made a little bit of, of scratch. Uh, I sold the tops cut 4.0, which is crazy. Uh, I never thought I would get rid of a tops knife, but there's a reason for that. I, uh, a long, quite a bit a while ago, uh, ordered a, a monkey thumper, which is a, a, bla a knife from uh, Black Rock Knives. And it is a ringed, um, ringed knife, kind of like a karambit, but, uh, um, so it kind of fills the the tops cut 4.0 role, and that is a knife that I don't carry much anyway. So I figured, you know, I'm gonna spend the money on this monkey thumper, and it's a, it's gonna be a little bit better than the cut 4.0 for what I want. It's gonna be a little more weapony, a little less outdoorsy, and uh, so I I let the tops go, uh, and then I also let ZT920 go, uh, less George uh, Harpy design uh turn uh as interpreted by zero tolerance great knife but don't use it and i figured why not uh recon one cold steel recon one in s35 vn you know i have plenty of cold steels didn't feel that didn't feel its absence and then southern grind bad monkey which is one i got not too long ago uh and that is a knife uh especially the copy i have which was used one that really should be used because it's 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 an excellent excellent shape it's an excellent knife it's an excellent shape it's now broken in and it's kind of the kind of knife that you're going to take and not worry about but it's very high quality so i'm glad i let that go to someone too so all of that being said the paypal account grew a little bit mm. and uh and you know in in an effort to trim the fat in the collection itself <laughs> and to be a little bit a little bit more responsible I integrated that back into the economy, into the family economy, except I had a couple of things I had to do first. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them is check out Rough Rider Knives. Okay. Uh, Rough Rider is a brand owned by Smoky Mountain Knife Works, like Marbles. They also own Marbles. And uh, they produce really high quality. From, from what I know from the folks I've trust on YouTube, they make some very, very high quality traditional knives uh, fold it, you know, uh, uh, slip joint knives. And, um, I say high quality for the money. They're 12 bucks. I mean, you're going to, you're going to buy a knife any, you're going to spend seven to 15 bucks on one of these, uh, knives. So I had to check them out. I got a, a couple of different, um, uh, patterns on the way. One that I'm very interested in is the tobacco sampler, which is an old, uh, uh, pattern of, uh, folding, traditional knife that farmers carried. I guess the blade is shaped specifically somehow for cutting tobacco. And uh, we live in the great state of Virginia. So uh, tobacco plays into our history, even though we're trying to erase history everywhere. Yes, we've grown a lot of tobacco here. And uh, so I'm interested in that pattern. It looks like a big scalpel. It looks like a big folding scalpel. It's got sort of a teardrop shaped blade, uh, angled, cool looking thing. So a bunch of Rough Riders coming, five Rough Riders coming, and they were uh, less than 70 bucks ordering five of those. So very excited for that. Uh, quite a while ago, I got on the list um, uh, on Emerson's website for the Elvia knife. That's his uh, that's his interpretation of Ed Calderon's Elvia fruit knife uh, that he's carried for self-defense for years and years. A lot of different makers have made their version. Copus Designs has a great one. Um, JB Knives um makes them rick lala has a folding version a lot of different people making these sort of tip down edge in fruit knife uh pickle style fighting uh little fighting knives mr emerson uh over there at emerson knives is friends with ed calderon designed his and has put it out in limited batches the third one 
I got on the list for the third one quite a while ago. And uh, I just saw my name came up. So I got that. And that'll be coming. I cannot wait to see that. That'll be such a cool knife. Very excited. And then thirdly, uh, I got the, um, I was trolling around on blade forums as I want to do. And um, someone was letting go a uh, Great Eastern Cutlery number 97 Allegheny, which is a big, uh, well, 3.75 inch bladed uh, clip point um, slip joint and in my favorite, uh, autumn bone cover. So I had to get that. Uh, so that's on the way too. So a lot of action going on. And, uh, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm slipping back into that slip joint phase. Uh, and I know I thought it was a fixed Bowie phase, but I kind of got that out of my system. <laughs> well, you got it out of your system. Maybe momentarily you, you scratch that itch right at the moment. Right. Yes at them because this is all about impulse <laughs> uh and also uh this uh, uh did a review of the uh, medford uh, gentleman jack uh one knife uh which is a slip joint slip joint the first slip joint from uh, medford knives and it is interesting that yeah that's a big fat hollow ground blade in the in the style of uh of Medford. So this is kind of uh, resuscitated that and I put together, re-put together my, uh, my uh, Benchmade proper, which I now like much better than before I took it apart. So yeah, slip joints are, are on the menu too. It's just a never ending cycle of what's whatever not, this is. What's not <laughs> on the menu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what? Exactly. I'm even I'm even going into like getting interested in cheap kitchen knives. You know that that's like that the junky is the right term. Junky kitchen knives is that what you call them? Oh, no, 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 no knife, knife junky, junky is the right term. The more and more I, <laughs> yeah. I, I analyze it. I, as my son and I do, I can't remember what movie we saw it from, but it was like when you don't get it, it's like brrr, kind of over oh, your yeah. head. <laughs> junky, what does that mean, junk? Uh -huh. <laughs> the knife junkie yeah the knife junkie.com is where you can mm. find all of this kind of good stuff so uh yeah it's right there in the name the knife junkie.com that's right jim so yeah look for look for videos on all this stuff coming as i as i get them out yeah well and uh speaking of knives we try to uh keep a selection of uh featured knives uh, available for sale from uh, some of our affiliate partners. And you can find that on the knifejunkie.com slash knives, the knifejunkie.com slash knives. And I'll also re remind you that uh, if you've not yet uh, gotten your copy of Knives 2021, I uh, got it on pre-order at the knifejunkie.com slash books, the knifejunkie.com slash books. And uh, I know when you got me into this knife game, I was not familiar with that with that book, and I think this year is the forty first edition of the the knives book, and it's like what eight hundred and fifty some odd pages, color pictures, all kind of good stuff. So yeah, definitely a definitely a great resource there. So uh, that book, the books, uh, the the knife book with the year that comes out every year, uh, used to be. You remember bookstores? Uh, and when I, <laughs> when I lived yes. and worked in Manhattan and when I had time to kill, I'd dip into, uh, Barnes and Noble. They had a giant Barnes and Noble at Union Square and I'd get a coffee and then I'd go into the stacks and look at books. And one that I would go to often, what, what, they had a, a section with knives and, uh, it was, I can't remember. I think it was in the sporting section, mm. like near hunting and stuff. But, uh, right. uh, yeah, I would always pull out that book and just like, look at these, because that, that book has a wide range from production to super crazy art knives. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a cool annual survey of what's going on. Yeah. All right, Bob, it's amazing uh, all the, the knife things that there are to talk about every week. I mean, there's constantly stuff coming out in, in Knife Life News, but then just you know being able to get a, just a glimpse uh, into your, uh, your knife collection with things coming in and recently a few things going out, but, you know, just <laughs> yeah. kind of, you know, getting a, you know, a, a kind of a, a feel for, for some of the things and the opportunity to, to see them and hear about them. Uh, a lot of knives in this world, man, there are a lot of knives. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a big and growing thing. And, and uh, you know, I just think, I think people allow themselves to get fascinated with it, realize it's not weird 
or embrace the weirdness and they just get into it. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I mean, what's not to like? Yeah, you, can get, you can get almost anyone interested in a knife, you know, if you're not doing it all the time. And right. Oh, right. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Except for maybe the wives. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're done. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, I'll give you the final word. It is the Knife Junkie podcast. So uh, what, what's the word for today or, or words, Mr. Knife Junkie, as we uh, conclude this show? Ships in the night. Remember, we used to call that that uh, coming and going ships yes. in the night. But that's yeah. that's what it is right now. Uh, things are coming that in. True. Going. I about that. And I got to say thank you to everyone who's so generous. Uh, uh, not only the pass around group, but but uh, individuals like tier one sending me these Asher knives to check out, you know, I hold on to them for two weeks, kind of soak it up a little bit, send it back. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Matthew, for sending me this awesome prototype. So um, yeah, ships in the night. I'm, I'm glad to get my hands on more and more of these things. All right. Well, uh, speaking of ships and shipping, uh, just kind of throw this quick tip out. I guess I'll give you the final word in just a second then, <laughs> since I'm now talking. Uh, if if folks are not aware, if you're doing a lot of shipping, uh, if you want to save some money using the U.S. Postal Service, uh, use Pirate Ship. Uh, it's not an affiliate link or anything like that. We don't make any commission on it or anything, but uh, I found oftentimes uh, they're a great way to save off the retail prices of the Uni mm -hmm. United States Postal Service. So uh, PirateShip.com. Uh, great resource there if you're doing some some shipping of knives or other stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got to take uh, you up on that. Yeah. All right. So now the final, final word. <laughs> oh, God. I don't think I have one. <laughs> Thank you all How for about, listening and spending your time. Don't, with a, what's How about don't take Dole for an answer? <laughs> don't. If, that's Thursday Night Knives. I don't want to oh, oversaturate, sorry. you know. All right. All right. <laughs> Well, just be sure to join us uh, every Wednesday right here for the Knife Junkies Midweek Supplemental, uh, Sunday for the interview show. And as Bob said, Thursday, that's where you won't be taking the all for an answer with Thursday Night Knives live at 10 p.m. on uh, YouTube and on Facebook. So for the Knife Junkies sitting right over there, if I can get my fingers right, Mr. Bob DeMarco, I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie person, thanking you for joining us on the Knife Junkie podcast. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.